You're tuned to Hearsay. We're live each Monday through Friday from 89.5 WHRV Public Radio for Hampton Roads. Uh, what a shock it was for people in this community and uh, and in the surrounding environs to uh, to learn that the uh, parent company of uh, Landmark Communications has an intention uh, to sell part or all of the company. Uh, that decision made a couple of weeks ago, quite a surprising decision, uh, not something that had been rumored in any way. And so we're talking about that sale in this half hour, but we're also talking about uh, the newspaper business in general and uh, what the future of the newspaper business will be. I'm happy to have Bill Choiki with us today, who's the business editor at the Virginian Pilot. Bill, good to have you back with us today. Good to talk with you, Kathy. Uh, were you surprised by this announcement? I mean, as the editor, the business editor, were you? Uh, did this catch you unawares? Of course it did. Yeah. And uh, you know, the truth be told, the New York Times at seven fifty one last Wednesday night uh, had a this uh, uh, budget line on their business budget for their cover: cable TV undated, a major development in the world of cable television. Uh, by Andrew Ross Sorkin, mm. and uh, fortunately, uh, one of our uh, business uh, copy editors uh, uh, saw that and stayed with the story, looked for it, and I think about 9.30 the story came over. I got the first call at 9.49, and we were able to match the New York Times, if not move it forward a little bit. Wow. So I feel fortunate because it would have, uh, shall we say, a little bit of egg in our face would have uh, if yes. we did not have it in Thursday's paper. <laughs> yes, true enough. Yeah, t- true enough. Uh, what do you make of that? I mean, there you are at, at the Virginian Pilot, which certainly is one of the many companies owned by Landmark Communication, but certainly one that I think is near and dear to the uh, the heart of the the Batten family that uh, that principally owns Landmark. What do you make of that? Well, again, uh, as a journalist, I have to kind of withhold any personal opinions, but I think I can offer some observations based on what we know and what's been in the newspaper. Uh, what uh, I sat through the interview with Frank Batten, Jr., who was chairman and CEO of Landmark on Thursday that Phil Walter had, and it was clear that we talked about why now, uh, but we not, we're not sure what the why is. In fact, Mr. Batten uh, uh, deflected in a very uh, kind and sophisticated way the questions of why now. Uh, I mean, the questions of why. The why mm-hmm. now is, I think, that the, he was, uh, and he has the voting interest, as he said, it was his decision, um, that I think the uh, the Weather Channel probably wouldn't fetch uh, any more than it would today in the future. Um, the uh, situation uh, the with newspapers and the value of the newspapers, and we own uh, four um, uh, moderately uh, uh, sized papers, including Roanoke and Greensboro and the Annapolis paper, as well as a bunch of smaller newspapers and two TV stations. And I think that they felt uh, that they, uh, given the reason... That they we don't know the reason why they're selling, but given that they wanted to sell, um, now is the best time. Hmm. And I- you might want to also consider that the Democrats uh, uh, take over the White House. There might be some tax changes down the line. Ah, all of which you would know as a business editor. I appreciate that, uh, that Bill Choiki. Have you been through this before in your own life? I know that you have not always been at the Virginian Pilot. You've worked, I think you worked at a, uh, in, in Tennessee and in other places. So have you been through this before? Uh, strangely, yes, but in a very minor way. Uh-huh. Uh, I was thinking about that, and I have uh, had a difficult time holding a job, or at least so it might appear by looking <laughs> at my resume. Uh, I've never really professionally had this done. Uh, strangely, in 1967, of all places, is when I was a 17-year-old high school kid, I uh, spent a summer as a Chicagoan down at my uh, Cajun uh, cousin in Tipito, Louisiana, and he sold a paper um, to a gentleman who then ended up selling it to the New York Times regional newspapers, and I was supposed to be there for eight weeks, and he cut my term short by two weeks, so I stayed there only for six <laughs> and was sent packing. So, I, And it took me a while to remember that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great point. Well, Bill, stay with us, will you? And uh, and let me introduce you to Lauren Rich Fine, who is a practitioner in residence at Kent State University's College of Communication and Information. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I, I think it's so interesting that you've moved to this experience at Kent State from many, many years as managing director at Merrill Lynch in equity research. So you were you were that one of those people in the brokerage firms who concentrated on the newspaper business, and you did that 
for quite a number of years. I did it for 19 years. Yeah, yes. and, and, and did you stop doing that? Do I understand correctly that you, you stopped doing that largely because the business was just getting so tough? No, um, I, I think that was unfortunately misreported or misrepresented. I left purely to do with um, having three kids in high school. And well, to spend fair enough. Well, I'm glad them. we cleared that up. <laughs> yes. Now, you know, the business is more difficult. Yeah. It's not as easy covering this industry and finding investments that make money, which, of course, dovetails with the decision for Landmark to decide to sell. And, you know, I agree with what's been said that in terms of the timing I think that I would just add some context, which is the industry has for several years now, the newspaper industry that is, has been going through what I would characterize as both secular and cyclical changes. Hmm. Secular being truly, you know, just permanent changes in the industry. And probably the biggest change has been the Internet, broadband use, and, you know, just the speed with which news travels but the variety of ways people access news and what people what people would define as news today there's a lot of user contributed commentary online there is you know people taking you know cell phone pictures right at the time of an event and posting them there's so many different ways that people access news maybe not the definition that we would all be comfortable with but ways of getting information but specifically what's happened with the newspaper industry is their classified advertising franchise, which is Help Wanted Real Estate and Auto, became the most important, if not in total dollars, revenue stream in terms of total operating profit or cash flow was the most profitable revenue stream for them. And that is directly competitive with the Internet, whether it's free sources like Craigslist or just you know even the newspaper's own offering, which is at a discounted rate. And that was something that just couldn't be stopped because, in fact, classifieds are better online. It's easier to search. It's easier to browse. It's easier to get other types of information. So financially,